In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of Daniel. We are continuing our series on the book of Daniel, and you may recall that when we left Daniel, there is a chapter break here, but it honestly feels a little weird because it's in the middle of a narrative. And I don't know, chapter 12 is so short, I almost feel like chapter 11 and 12 should be combined into the same very long chapter, but for whatever reason, they decided to put a chapter break there. Obviously, Daniel didn't originally put one when, when he wrote the book. But this particular passage is a continuation of what we've been reading, where Daniel sees this vision, he sees the man in linen cloth, and he sees all these prophecies and has them explained to him about what they mean. And so this is the verse that is a, a continuation of that in Daniel 12, verses 2 through 4 where he says, Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake, these to everlasting life, but the others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. Those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, and those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But as for you, Daniel, conceal these words and seal up the book until the end of time. Many will go back and forth, and knowledge will increase. Now, this is a really interesting passage, and I'm not even really going to get into the prophecy aspect of it or try to explain to you what this predicts, because we've already talked about that in some previous segments. But what's important to note about this particular passage is the imagery in it and why the imagery is the way that it is. First of all, it talks about those being risen from the dead and that many who are risen from the dead, in other words, those that are asleep in the dust rising up, that they will essentially be beacons of knowledge, that the light of knowledge will come from them, and that it will be like the stars in the heavens. Now that is really fascinating, because it essentially reaffirms the Christian mission. Now, is this talking about actual literal Christians here on earth? Well, there are some righteous people that were resurrected when Christ died, so I guess you could make that argument that it's being a little bit more literal here. But even if you're thinking of it as purely figurative, even if you're looking at it from the perspective of it just being symbolic of the way that God's kingdom is going to work, isn't it still pretty profound? That you have people, now they're not the sun, they're not the greatest source of light, they're not God but that individual people here on this earth who are risen from the dead, not unlike Christians are risen from the dead again when they are baptized and come into contact with Christ's blood, rise up again just like Christ did, that once that takes place, you are counted as the risen, and it is your job, it is your responsibility to bring the light of knowledge to others. See, that to me fits so perfectly. Now, the way that this works and the, the way that this is, is worded specifically, I'm not sure if that's exactly what it's talking about, but the imagery does fit. And even if that's not explicitly what was meant by the prophecy, there is a commonality and theme here that certainly helps explain this process of Christians going and making other Christians. Not that we do the saving, not that we're the ones that originally came up with the knowledge, but we act as a lamp to them. We say, here is the light, here is God's word, this is the truth, this is the knowledge that I impart to you, what are you going to do about it? The way that that verse is reading that it will bring brightness to the expanse of heaven, and those who lead, uh, who, those lead the many to righteousness like the stars. I mean... If you're a Christian and you know that it's your responsibility to share the gospel with people, that kind of puts a pretty big burden on you, but it also makes you think, wow, I get to be a part of this amazing quest that God has put me on to share the light of knowledge with everyone. 
And I get to be a small part of that. That's pretty incredible. Another thing that it does is it kind of sets up the purpose of prophecy. Because it almost makes you think that prophecy is really more for those after than the ones during whatever it's prophesying is going to happen. Because you'll look at the last part of that verse, and it talks about that light of knowledge being put forward to people. And then he talks about Daniel. He says, when you conceal these words and seal up the book until the end of time, many will go back and forth and knowledge will increase. So after Daniel writes this, and after the book has been sealed and people are reading it and looking at it and, and trying to understand what it's saying, its real impact happens after all those things have been predicted. Because the things that are predicted in prophecy, people couldn't have changed them. They couldn't have really done anything about it. And so where it really becomes useful is that, A, it asserts God's authority that if somebody's writing something, you know, several hundred years before it happens and everything turns out to be true, then you know, okay, that guy actually was a prophet. You know what? Props to him. That guy actually was a prophet and he really did know what he was talking about. And his message must then, of course, be from an all-knowing God. So it did have the same purpose as miracles in the sense that it conveyed authority from God upon certain people. But it also makes you think that, wow, the, the prophecies really were not even so much for the people living in the time that the prophecy was fulfilled, but the people living afterward that could look back and say, oh, wow, there, there's some credibility to this. I mean, everything that he's saying happened, I need to read the rest of it and increase my knowledge, increase my spiritual acumen, increase my relationship with God, because this is clearly a God that has authority. So in a sense, the, the miracle of prophecy is the purpose of, of every miracle, is that it is there to inspire knowledge and curiosity and belief in God. And I think that it also gives us a purpose of the book of Daniel, too that knowledge will increase. There's some things in Daniel that even for somebody that is a seasoned Bible scholar, sometimes a little bit hard to understand. But the point is, God is not the author of confusion. He's the author of knowledge and wisdom and light. And so God wouldn't give us a whole bunch of stuff that we can't understand, nor would he give us stuff that was just there to confuse us. If we have this literature, we have it for a reason. And we have it because God believed that we could understand at least some parts of it that would help us in our spiritual walk with him. And so in a very brief, concise amount of time, we have the purpose of Christians and the purpose of those that follow God. And we also have the purpose of prophecy and the purpose of the book of Daniel as a whole. In a very short amount of time, God gave us an awful lot of rationale for why this is an important book to study. Stay the course, friends. Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet, totally made up.